All right, hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros here with Brian today. And uh, we got one that always comes up, especially when it's hot and humid, condensate management. We've talked about it before, but we're, we got a few tools here that we've had some luck with. Brian, what we got going on here? Yeah, great. So um, what I've got here is a basic P-trap. I went down and purchased this guy called an Easy Trap because I really like the, uh, the clear tube there. So it's going to be good for the demonstration. And what we're going to talk about is just basic maintenance on your condensate drains, yep. whether it be P-traps or drain lines in general, condensate pumps, just the things to look out for when you're doing your maintenance because yep. drain lines are a big source of callbacks for HVAC companies. And those are about the worst callbacks you can yep. have. You're out there doing your PMs. These are things we should be doing every time. And if you don't properly clean it out, it's going to stop back up. Yes. Yeah. Water damage is always expensive. Not only does it look bad, on the yeah. company, but yes, if you cause damage to the customer, you might yeah. lose that customer. It's never fun. And what's frustrating about it, John is this is it's a very basic task in theory. Sometimes they're tough to get it to, is. and that's when yeah. you got to let folks know. But as far yeah. as cleaning goes, you know, once you get it down, it's not something that's going to change. It's yeah. going to be the same all the time on how to clean them. So I'll just go in quickly. You know, a couple methods uh, to clean these guys out. When you install a P trap, you want to make sure. On the entering side of the trap, entering to the unit is higher than the leaving side. So there's a lot of reason for that. Basically, when you have a P-trap, you're going to be on the negative side of your airstream. So it's going to be wanting to pull air back into the unit. So if I don't have this column of water to break that suction, it's never going to drain properly. It's just going to hold the water in the pan, start spilling over inside mm -hmm. the unit. As soon as that unit shuts off, then it's going to pour out and it's going to pour out everywhere. So believe it or not, that gets missed quite a bit. They'll get installed like this. They won't drain properly like that. The higher side, because you need that extra weight of that water to help push it out. But big things, the column of water here to break the suction. And then as you start draining, the weight of that water will help push that and drain. So always make sure they're installed properly. We'll make some other videos about how to size a trap based off airflow and things. But just number one rule, if you walk up to one and you see this and this, both of these are level, that trap's incorrect. This that enters into the unit and this leaves the unit, this should always be lower than that by about an inch or so is a good rule yeah. of thumb on just, you know, like commercial residential stuff. So. Insulation is a big key trip for sure. And as you leave this, now you need to be gravity pitched down a quarter inch every foot. You need to be pitched down gravity. So installed, it can be level right here, but when we leave here, you need to start pitching your drain down for gravity feed. So you get a lot of algae buildup and growth. Honestly, I couldn't break it down exactly what that stuff is. It's um, like a slime sludge. It looks like a giant slime sludge that can be, it can be six inches long or more, the stuff that comes out of that out of that drain mm -hmm. or builds up in this P-trap. So you have really sludge, slimy, nasty stuff, and it just continues to grow and continues to grow and expand. And if you don't get it cleaned out of there properly, maybe you get some of it out, leave the rest, it'll, yeah. it'll come back quickly. It typically starts growing and as soon as you get in the cooling season, then it'll grow all cooling yep, season. That's right. And then probably won't dry out until. That's correct. Until winter and to, to get to some, some heat heat point. But that's why it's always important to make sure you are cleaning out your, your condensate drain. Absolutely. So. Very important. One thing you can do to help limit the growth is you can put pan tablets in your drain mm -hmm. pan. But sometimes it's easier said than done. In these smaller A coils, you really can't access the drain pan yeah. without tearing the whole unit apart to get to it. And that's not really feasible on PM work. Um, if, but if you can access your drain pan for sure, try to get some pan tabs in there. That keeps the growth down, but it's never going to fix it. It's, yeah. It just kind of mitigates it a little bit. Yeah. So we're going to talk about how to clean this stuff out once it's got this slime slug in there, if you want to call mm -hmm. it that, and the best ways to get it out. So first way, which comes with this little P-trap, and I think you can get this brush anywhere, but I think it's a really handy thing to have for a service tech to have on the truck, regardless whether they purchase one of these or not. Just a cheap little tool you can keep on your truck to help out is this nice little brush with this flexible wand. It's made to fit right into a three quarter inch drain. And in this example, you would go right into your clean out here and you can just run it right down. And as you can see through the clear tubing, it's gonna flush all that stuff up and go all the way back to the inlet of this. Now you've got a float switch built in here. You may or may not wanna take off. If I were doing maintenance on it, I'd go ahead and take that float switch off and run that thing till it comes all the way up yeah. the top. Then I know I've got it cleaned out. If possible, where you go into the unit now, if there happens to be a unit, hopefully the guy who installed the unit was kind enough to install a PVC union that I can now screw this apart 
and then I could take this brush and then I could go right into the inlet of the drain pan as well because I might get it all out of here but there could be another big slug yeah. bullet inside that pan so yeah. if you can get to the inlet of the pan this is a great little tool to get in that pan and clean that opening out um, so handy cheap easy good way to clean one out and then we got a couple other methods that are pretty common that we'll talk about real quick. Hey, can I just say one thing? Mm -hmm. One of my pet peeves is when somebody glues the PVC yes. into this this uh, joint right here. You can't get a wand in there to or right. anything to suck it out or, or blow air into it. So I always just make that a hand tight, and if it's coming in on the horizontal, you shouldn't have to worry about it falling out from a gravity standpoint or anything. That's so. a really good point because yeah. that's it's not a high pressure. It's no, just gravity. It's drain. just gravity. And by not gluing that means you get to get back in there and access it really yeah. easily. Without and and the guy in the field, he's coming to service it. If it's glued, now he's got to cut it further down. Hope he's got a coupling or something on his truck. Yeah. And if you don't, now you're, you just, you took a 15 minute process and just turned it into an hour right. or more trying to get parts. So that's a really good point. Yeah. You definitely don't glue that part. Have it stubbed in there far enough, but you can pop it right out and do all your work without yeah. glue. Very good point. We'll talk about the, uh, the flush gun. Our guys really like this thing. Uh, most techs out in the market do. It's just a little hollow gun. What it does, it takes a CO2 cartridge, screws in there, and you can see as the end is fit to fit again inside there so it gets the full force of that CO2. You squeeze the trigger, it's going to blow that back out. They're a very good thing to have, but you need to be careful, are you really getting in the trap? Depending on where you're inserting this in your drain, you just want to make sure I'm getting that pressure across the trap. I'm, go I'm not bypassing the trap and going straight in the pan because they're not all going to be clear like that where yeah. you can see them. They're probably not going to be. So when you use these, really good product. The guys love it. Just make sure you're connecting to a point where you know, like if I got up here, I'm probably going to bypass and my pressure is going to go out there and not really hit that trap. So I would want to cap that or cap this to make sure it's blowing through there all the way. Mm -hmm. And these will do maybe a couple drains. You know, you won't get a lot out of them, but it comes with a box with like 30 different yeah. cartridges in it. So really handy there. Um, if you're doing a big PM agreement, Maybe you've got several units, you're gonna do 20, 30 units. I really like this guy. This will go right onto my nitrogen bottle or compressed air. I can use my refrigerant hose. Of course, I wouldn't wanna use it for refrigerant after the fact because I put water in it, but you can screw a hose on it like you would use for refrigerant. Mm -hmm. Right on there and a little coil gun. Yeah. Same purpose, but you gotta be careful when using these, you dial your regular regulator down on your nitrogen bottle below 30 psi because if you got if you got it pumped up to 100 psi even though that pipe might be glued down there you'll blow the pipe apart on yeah it. and now you've created a worse problem so set your regulator at 30 psi and if you got a full nitrogen bottle you can blow drains all day with that thing mm -hmm. and uh, it'll go to a little bit larger size as you can see it'll kind of fit and stop so I could probably go up to about a one inch drain with that one if I wanted to but it's nice it stops Another good thing to note, again, if you don't have everything sealed out perfectly and you hit that and it's not a tight seal, maybe speaking from past experience, I might have just used a hose and stuck down in there. And when I blew it, it blew right back out on my face because it wasn't a tight. So make sure you got a nice tight seal where it pushes all that air down there. So really handy tool here for that as well. And it's all about just making sure the drain line's clean. You've got that stuff out of there and disposed of and always good when you're done pour water back in that trap make sure it's draining before mm -hmm. you leave so just keep pouring it in there until you see it just it's, it's running out now just that way you know for sure that thing is draining before you leave the job yeah. so that that's that's something that gets missed as well work real hard do a good job but then um, not testing it before you leave and making sure it's working and then we got a, a one more piece that works really well for us um, that we can hook right up to a shop vac this is really easy cheap part not expensive to buy as you can see, that'll go right on the end of your shop vac hose. Now, instead of blowing the trash out, we're just going to put it in there and it's going to suck it right out again. Easy enough. You'd want to cap this line off so we're not just pulling the drain that's going outside. Yeah. And that's going to pull everything out of here and also help clear out a little bit of what's in the pan. But mm -hmm. it'll definitely suck all that out. I like that one because you can even do it on the exterior of the building and suck all the way through. That's right. That's yeah. a good point. And 
visual so you can see when it you'll see that thing pass through here yeah and you'll know you got it out of there and everyone should have a shop back on site and if you if you do have water already in there you know all the water goes to the shop back too. that's right so you're kind of doing two, two things at once yeah. there you're cleaning your mess up and you're doing a good job cleaning yeah. and out of all of them i'm pretty sure this is probably the cheapest tool out of all yeah of them. i think and it was like 10 15 bucks yeah. on amazon great thing so. to have on the truck you know we encourage our guys to you know keep all your stuff together you're going to be cleaning drains yeah. with so when you get out there to hit your pm it's all in one spot you're not sorting through and this is a really handy one to have yeah okay uh, one other thing we'll talk about is the good old condensate pump so maybe my unit location doesn't allow me to have a standard drain to gravity drain outside the building you know and i have to drain my condensation into this condensate mm -hmm. pump so we leave our unit with a three quarter inch drain it may have a p-trap on it if it's on the positive side of the coil it may not need a p-trap but either way that three quarter pipe will come in and then it's going to dump all of its water inside of this condensate pump into that reservoir so in there you've got a float as that float raises, it's gonna activate this pump and start pumping the water out, and it's gonna pump it out into a 3 8 vinyl tubing, clear vinyl tubing that mm -hmm. will then be routed out somewhere into a mop sink or outside of the building. Yep. One thing you wanna be aware of these, that they will have a capacity of how far of a run of the condensate drain, the final tubing you can put on there. So, you know, you probably not going to put a couple hundred feet of tubing on it. It's, it does have limits, but these are very handy. You see them all over the place, but they're a maintenance item as well. They are. Yeah. So same thing. You still got to blow your drain out in your unit, just like we would have before. But now all that water has been draining in here. That same slime is going to build up inside the tank of this pump. So we go through, do our regular maintenance. We blow our drain out. Then we're going to need to come to this pump and this vinyl tubing that is now leaving the pump and going out, I would like to disconnect that, take my little hollow gun or something, just give it a shot, make sure that tubing's blown out and clear. If you run into a situation where you keep losing condensate pumps, the motors are burning out. A lot of times what we find is that vinyl tubing is going up and someone has wired tied it off to keep it secure and they've pinched it and that'll, that'll burn your pump motor. Yeah. It just is too much restriction for it. It'll work for a while. And so if you ever, like, I keep having to change this pump every year, look at that. But then maintenance wise- Or you're running too high and you're building too much head. True, yeah, yeah. Good. another good point. It's just too much. There's all these will be in the literature that comes with this pump. So there's some restrictions yeah, the, there. The pump should tell you what, what your, your max lift should be. That's right. So we take that tubing off, we blow it out. Then we're gonna wanna open this pump up, clean this up if it needs it take that outside if you can. Um, sometimes they'll mount these on the side of drain pans and maybe you can't remove it, but at least vacuum it out, clean it out, wipe it down, and then put it back together because uh, these guys are definitely a maintenance item. They will have a safety switch on here, so if mm -hmm. something happened to it, if you come across one and this isn't wired up, it doesn't mean it's not gonna work, but I'd let the customer know somebody before us installed a pump and they didn't wire the safety up. That may be the way they want it for some reason. It shouldn't be that way. This should be wired into the unit. So if something fails on this pump, we're still gonna keep draining water into it and filling it up. As soon as it fills up, this switch makes us a safety. It'll turn the unit off. Turn your unit off. off. You yep. have to go down there and check it out and make sure That's right. it prevents you from having water so damage. If you run a service call and they say no cooling, but the fan's running, first thing I'm gonna start checking is, is checking this pump, make sure yeah. it's not full of water. One thing, Brian, I thought about, um, that's a great point, but the slime and the sludge you get, mm -hmm. don't ever run your uh, your condensate in an open tube to uh, any kind of sanitary lines because the off gases from that that's sanitary, right. that'll create the, the type of funk that you've never experienced before in your entire life. Yeah, and, that's uh, a good point. That's and a really it, good really, point. it really ends up being a, um, an indoor air quality issue, especially if, if that, uh, whatever you're growing uh, from those off gases, um, gets back into your air handler unit and gets pumped out into the, mm -hmm. the living spaces. Yeah, I ran into similar uh, winter time and they kept complaining they get a sewer gas smell in the winter. Yeah. What was happening is the P-trap was drying up and they had it drained into yeah. black water. So if, if you're out there running a call in the winter time and they, you smell sewer gas coming mm -hmm. from the drain, that's probably what's happening. Yeah. yeah, so always that needs to go to gray water, normal disposal. Um, don't ever pump it into black water for yeah. sure. All right. Thanks, Brian. Always great to be with you. Yep, yeah. Yep. And uh, hey, thanks so much for the support on Mechanical Pros and make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe. And uh, we'd love to see you next time on Mechanical Pros.